Hey everyone, if you remember from our first video in this ML.NET end-to-end -end series, we created our Azure resources uh, and then we created this console project where we used ML.NET to get data from the database uh, to create our pipeline and our ML.NET model. And then we also saved that model to Azure Blob Storage. So now what I want to do in this video is I want to actually utilize the, the model that we created here and create a web API so we can predict from our model. And to do that, I'm uh, still in the same solution here. I'm going to create another project and it's going to be a web project here. Let's call it uh, one API. And here I'll just do an API project do an API project. I'm not going to mess with HTTPS here. No authentication. And right, now we have our, our project here. I'm going to remove this values controller. And I'm going to create another controller. I'm going to do an empty API controller. I'm going to call it predict. This is the controller we're going to use to call the predict method of our ML.NET model. Okay. Before we continue, uh, I'm going to add some NuGet pro uh, packages here. And I'll do ML.NET so we can load the model into ML.NET model. Uh, so load the ML.NET model. I'm using version one for this. And I'm gonna get a couple of uh, Microsoft extensions uh, for configuration, because I'm still gonna use that, uh, that JSON file for my configurations here. So I'll get the main configuration one. And then I'm gonna get the JSON one. There we go. All right, so let's go back to this controller here. Controller here. And this is, like I said before, this is gonna be used to load in the model and then fun predict function. From. And since we are gonna be sending in data and to this API to use that data to predict from it, uh, we can't use an HTTP get call because we need to send in some data. So instead, we'll do an HTTP post method here. And I'm going to put it as async because we're going to make some, an async call within it. And I'm going to return a float. And that's going to return the, the bind quality uh, a, a number that we'll get back from our uh, prediction from the model. We're going to post. And to send in the data that we need to uh, used to predict predict from, uh, I'm going to use the from body because it's going to get it from the body of our request. And it's going to be the, that one data, I'll call it one data. And so we don't have reference to this because it's, it's not have reference to this because it's, it's in uh, this, uh, this console project. So what I can do instead, since it references this, this model from from both of these projects, I can actually create another project where we kind of hold all of our, our common code. And that is going to be, I'll do a .NET core class library. I'll just name it one common. And what I can do here, and what I can do here is I can just move this up in here. I'll remove this class that it created. There we go. And to use this project within these others two, I have to add a reference to it. Good, and I'll do the same for our previous one. I need to come back here and fix this one. Go. Just 
so using one common I'll delete this one too because it was conflicting with it. So let's should there we go. And then in our controller here, I think I forgot to do when I move this up here. It still has the namespace of one regression, so I'm going to change that to one common to match uh, the name of the project. And now, when I move this in, use one data. And I'll need to update this using one common. There we go. So that fixes that. And now there's only one place where I have this, where I can reference this one data. First thing I need to do is I need to, since I'm going to get it from the Azure Blob Storage, I need to fix up my configuration, kind of similar to what we did uh, up here before where we built uh, a configuration from a JSON file. I'm going to do the same thing in here. But this is a little bit different since it's a web API project. API project. So in my startup here, I have this configuration and then this configure services is where I can I can set this so I'm actually going to take some code here we have app settings and there's our app settings and I'm going to replace this with our uh, blob connection string Bring in namespace. There we go. Now I just need to set that configuration equal to the, the build. And made this settable. I need to uh, singleton. So it loads only once when the project starts. There you go. That's just set for that. And what we can do to have access it within our controller method is I can create a constructor. And here I can tell it to pass in our configuration. Configuration. Bring it. And I can make a private field. And then just set it within the constructor. And I'm going to create a couple of other uh, class level fields here. Uh, I'm going to create a read only string that's going to hold our path to our model when we download it from Azure Blob Storage. And I'm going to create an ML context. There we go. And what I can do here is I can set the context equal to a new ML context. And for the model path, I'm going to get that from let's do system IO path combine. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna set it into my, my documents folder. And to do that, I can do an environment that get folder path and then near the environment dot and then near the environment dot special folder my documents and then I'm gonna give it a name of one dot zip it's gonna be just the same name as what we have in our Azure blob storage now back to our post method here what I want to do first is check if we already have the file downloaded. If you already have it downloaded, there's no need to download it again. So I can do is if it's 
the file does not exist, and I'll just pass in the model path. From here, since it doesn't exist, I can access it from blob storage. What we do is kind of do similar to what we did before when we accessed our blob storage. You create a storage account in that NuGet package as well. And that is Windows Azure Storage. So install that. Go. From here, the storage account equals cloud storage account, bring in the namespace, and then parse out the connection string, which is configuration blob connection string. I think that's what I named it. Let's check here. Yeah, blob connection string. I get a client from it. Create cloud blob client. From there, I can get access to the container. Container reference. The container name is going to be model. And do blob equals container dot get block blob references. That's going to be our um, the name of the model file, which is one that the name of the model file, which is one dot zip. And with that, since I have that uh, the blob reference from the blob account, I can await blob that download to file. I'm just going to use that model path, and I'm going to tell it to always create a new one when it downloads. So if we don't have the, the model downloaded yet, that's what we're going to do here. Just download it from Azure Storage. And with, when it's downloaded, I can get access to the file and create a file stream here. So I would uh, file open read with a model path. Actually, let me create uh, an instance of, the, of this model here. It's going to be an instance of a transformer. Set the model. And so set model equals to our ML context model dot load and it takes in an out variable of our um, data view schema so I can just do just put it up here data view schema schema and just pass that in that's an out variable now we have the model loaded locally we can start by creating the prediction engine and that comes in from the context that model that create prediction engine and this is just like we've seen several times before in uh, ml.net we have to give it the input schema and the prediction schema which we don't have created yet and then we will just pass in the model there and what we can do uh, in my one comment I'll just add a new class one prediction one item here of our predicted one quality and we give it the column name of score and I actually need to install ml.net in here too so I can use that attribute good I'll just bring that in alright 
and then in the controller it already sees that because we already have that namespace brought in and now we have our prediction engine I can create our prediction function or create our prediction and do uh, prediction engine at predict and we just pass in the data we get here and then we can just return prediction at predicted quality there we go now let's now we can try to run this and we'll make sure the API is set a startup project there you go then go starts up it tries to go to that, that values controller before and this is a common mistake I make once again I need to tell this app settings to copy if newer good like I was saying before it tries to go to this values controller uh, when you start up but that's okay and it can be found because we deleted that um, what we can do to test this out is use something like postman and we got our we can use this URL here. Yeah, and it's, it's when I predict. Yeah, and it's, it's when I predict controller. There. And uh, let's see, headers. I want to give it a content type of application JSON because we're going to send it some JSON and give it a raw body of uh, a JSON object here and these are just uh, the different values that we can uh, that we're sending it so like the type is white and the different uh, attributes of the one to determine the quality and hit send and see if it works Oh, and it didn't because I told him to do a git request and we don't have a git request. So there we go. This, and we got a predicted quality of, of nine. So it seems like this is a pretty good one. That's, that's it, kind of a, a basic way to create an API that loads in the ML.NET model and gives us a, a prediction. And so our next video is we're going to create kind of a, a small web application that will use this API and it will just kind of give it a, a customer facing way to use the, the model that we built. So I'll see you all then. Thanks. Thanks.